this is a question you want to ask because if you don't ask it, they might not send it. You know, if you're not inquiring about it, they might not know you're interested in it. But if you ask, you'll get that weekly email, that monthly email with all the deals that they're offering. So these are important questions that you want to ask the companies you're doing business with so you can kind of guide the relationship and where it's heading, where it's going, and what opportunity is really there. So now we're going to review some questions you want to be asking these suppliers whether it's through email or on the phone, some pertinent, important questions you want to ask them so you can kind of figure out where they stand as far as terms go, as far as shipping goes, as far as their catalogs go, as far as minimum order quantities, all of those important questions that need to be asked so you can gauge the process in which to continue the relationship. It's super important to be able to ask some of these questions. Now, it's all about reading their body language, reading their tone of voice, and kind of gauging them as humans, because all of this is human interaction. A big part of this business is understanding people. And the better you can understand people, the more successful you will be. And based on their tone, or if you're in person, based on their body language, you will get a good indication of how many of these questions you can ask, how many they'd be comfortable answering, and what tone you should bring it to them in. So some of these important questions are, this is super important question, there are no specific order, it's just a list of questions that we like to ask the suppliers we open accounts with. Do you have a catalog in Excel format? with description, UPC, price, and case pack. Now this information is important because it's necessary to add it to our UPC scraper. You gotta have the price, the description is super helpful, and you need a UPC, and case pack is huge too because you know how many units to order when you're placing that final order with that supplier. So that is a great question to ask them and it'll let them know that you're knowledgeable about what you're talking about because you're already referring to the catalog. Now the next question you wanna ask is, do you have an MOQ, also called a minimum order quantity? A bunch of these companies, most of these companies will have MOQs that you have to meet or else you won't even be able to place an order with these companies. Now from my experience, most of the MOQs, 1,500, maybe 2,000, sometimes a little greater, but usually right around 1,500 to $2,000 is your standard MOQ for most suppliers. And sometimes they also have two different types of MOQs. One is an MOQ just to place an order with the company, and the next is an MOQ to get free shipping. So let's say they have, for example, a $1,500 MOQ just to place an order. You can't place an order unless you meet that $1,500 minimum. And then they may have a $5,000 MOQ to get free shipping. So if you place an order between $1,500 and $4,999, you have to pay for shipping. But if you place an order $5,000 or greater, they will pay for shipping. Companies like that, you definitely want to spend the time in their catalog to meet that free shipping requirement because it will save money. And it might not seem like a lot of money, but if you place four or five orders a week, that money really adds up. You know, you figure, let's just say on average $200 per shipment to pay for shipping times four orders a week, that's $800 dollars a week times 52 weeks what is that 40 41,600 dollars a year in shipping expenses that is a lot of money you know so you want to save that money you want to communicate with them and find out what their MOQs are for placing an order and for free shipping and that brings me into the next question who covers the cost of shipping if they do charge shipping, you want to know who covers it. Do they cover a percentage of it? Do you have to cover the other percent? Is absolutely every order you place with them, do they cover the cost of shipping? Is it completely free to ship? Do you have to cover the whole cost? So that's the follow up for question three. Now this next question a lot of people don't know about and it's really one of the ways we leverage money in our business to continue to grow and scale to the size that we are. We encourage you use this method to continue to grow and scale your business as well. It's net terms. So it's simply just asking them, do you have net terms? A, it will let you know that you're knowledgeable of the industry and B, 
it's essentially a free loan. So net 30 means that the buyer, which is you, will pay the seller in full on or before the 30th calendar day, including weekends and holidays, of when the goods were dispatched by the seller or the services were fully provided. So essentially what net 30 means or net seven or net 14 or net 21, that means that you don't have to pay for the inventory until that net term is met. So let's say, for example, the best net term you can have is obviously the longest net term. So anything net 45, net 60, net 90, those are huge, great net terms. If you can get net terms like net 45, net 60 or net 90, you're already ahead of the curve because that means you don't have to pay the supplier for 45 or 60 or 90 days from when you receive the goods. And what that allows you to do is flip the inventory and then pay the supplier back with the money that you made from flipping their inventory. So it's essentially a free and interest-free loan that you get to use. You get to use their products as the loan to in turn generate revenue, which in turn generates profit, and then pay them back with the money that you made off of their products. Now, net 14 makes it a little complicated, especially because Amazon's two week payment schedule. Even if you're getting daily payouts and using one of the programs like Payability, net 14 doesn't really allow you to flip that inventory in enough time. But net 30, that's a whole different story. Net 45, whole different story. Net 60, those are the terms that can really change your entire business. Let's say you place a $50,000 order. Imagine not having to pay for that for 30 days. Imagine what you can do with that product. You could sell 75% of that product in 30 days and pay the company back with the money you made off of it. Straight game changer. Now, if they say yes to net terms, you want to ask, what are the terms? You know, is it net seven? Is it net 30? Is it net 40? Is it net 60? You want to get a good clarification of what those terms are. And then you want to ask, what forms of payment do you accept? So they do, do they accept ACH payments? Do they accept wire transfers, credit cards, checks, cash? Is there any incentive if I pay cash? Is there a discount? Are there any fees for wire transfers? Are there any fees for PayPal transactions? Are there any fees for processing a credit card? You wanna know all this information so you don't get hit with any surprise fees once you're placing that order. Because a 3% fee on an order that you're making 14% on now becomes 11%. Then another great question that you definitely want to ask is do you have any weekly or monthly promotional sheets or deals you offer and there's so much more information in the discount video we provided we provide almost I think it's 15 different types of discounts you can request and one of them are weekly and monthly promotional sheets and deals this is a question you want to ask because if you don't ask it they might not send it you know, if you're not inquiring about it, they might not know you're interested in it. But if you ask, you'll get that weekly email, that monthly email with all the deals that they're offering. So these are important questions that you want to ask the companies you're doing business with. So you can kind of guide the relationship and where it's heading, where it's going and what opportunity is really there. Now, back to net terms. I want you to all know that net terms may not always happen on the first order. They might not happen on the second or even the fifth order. Sometimes it takes six months or even a year of doing business with the company to get net terms. For example, we had a company we started doing business with about three years ago. In the beginning, there was no net terms. As soon as we picked up the order, we wrote them a check and we paid for the inventory. About eight or nine months went by, I asked for net terms. We got a very low net terms. It was $5,000. But we also weren't placing large orders with this company. They were maybe seven, dollars $8,000. And the net term was for 14 days. So we didn't have to pay for about 60% of the order, 70% of the order for 14 days. That's huge, you know? And then we knew the relationship was building and we were growing trust because we were paying back our net terms on time. So the trust was there. And then about a year and a half went by and I asked for an increase in net terms. And now we are at a net 30 with that company, currently with a $40,000 net term. So that's huge. That means for four, we can buy $40,000 worth of inventory for that company and not have to pay it back 
for 30 full days. That is amazing. That's how you leverage supplier relationships to continue to grow your business. Especially if you're having trouble getting a bank loan, a private loan, an SBA loan, opening more credit cards, leverage your business through net terms. So this is a review with some of the pertinent questions we like to ask the suppliers we're setting up accounts with. Check you in the next video. Stay lit.